Good day, Aussie bonsai bloke here going. Uh, today I'm going to repot the mulberry. I'm going to show you a video of, uh, well, tell you about how I got lost, and I'll give you a quick show around the trees in spring. Only a really quick show around because it's getting late. Um, you might be able to see the sun's already gone down behind me there, so I'll give you a quick show before all the light's gone. And then we'll get to repotting the tree. Cheers. Okay, so here's everything here. It's going all right. You can see this one here. Got leaves starting to come out there. Um, I'll just show you a couple others. Manchurian pears coming out. Pretty dark as you can see. Sun's going down. Uh, there's the almond tree. Airlay is not doing too well, the leaves. It's sort of half dying on the end, but we'll see how it goes. Have an airlayer and almond, so maybe they're not, not that great for airlayering. Quince, just starting to shoot out. Turkey shake, shooting out good. Got new shoots all over it. Chinese elm. A lot of shoots on that. Uh, the, the ash trees. Ash trees are well and truly out. They're one of the first ones to shoot. So they're well and truly out. Thread graft coming out of there is getting pretty good. It's fatter than inside and the leaves are shooting on it. So I'm hoping after this year that thread graft I can cut. From where it originated the um atlas blue cedar is pushing out all new shoots now when i got it it was nearly dead hadn't seen enough sun but it's starting to look quite healthy now the new growth is healthy anyway so that's about it oh i just want to show you too this is what happens when you repot a um this is what happens when you repot the peppercorn tree pretty much every time I've repotted it this is what happens all the leaves look like they go brown and they do end up falling off looks very very sick you know like there's good green color back there that's a radiator pine by the way and then you get this thing here but not only from repotting if I was to have just trimmed that and not repotted it, they still go brown. Very temperamental. But then at the same time, it always shoots back, so it is hardy. Pomegranate, just starting to push out. Uh, this is a peach. Peach trees just starting to push out. Just a fruiting peach. Anyway, oh, some, this is my air layer I did on a kumquat. You can see it's actually starting to put out some flowers. So that should flower soon. So you never know, might get some kumquats. We'll see. Oh, I'll just show you one more thing. Okay, so I'll just try to show you here. If we've got enough light, I don't know. There's a couple of almonds just starting up. You might be able to just see them in the dark here does have a couple of almonds on it so it's pretty cool remember I left just a couple of flowers so we got some almonds that's about it got some apricots at the back here starting to push out and yeah that's about it so spring's coming best time of year watching everything shoot out again pretty cool oh the um Bottle brush has got some nice fat, nice fat flower buds on it now. So that's going to hopefully flower soon. See how it goes. Anyway, I better get back inside because there's not much light out here and the camera's struggling a bit. Jeez, as you can see, lights of the shed are brighter than out here now. And then there's a pomegranate here. Still got one of the old pomegranates on it. 
It's starting to get little red new shoots on it also. Cheers. Let's get back inside. G'day, welcome back. Well, no, I don't think I've got this going first. G'day. Aussie Bonds, oh bloke, yeah, go. That's just in case I didn't do the intro outside before this. If I did, you got two intros. Bonus. Um, anyway, so this is the air layered mulberry tree I did many years ago, seven, eight years ago. It's growing really well, except I did put it in a smaller pot probably two years ago and Last year I didn't get a lot of growth, like I haven't trimmed this back at all. One thing it has done is it's really helped to get fine ramification on it, but you know, I'm a bit worried that I'm pushing it a bit too hard as far as in too small a pot, getting too hot, not enough moisture. So I think I'm gonna slip pot it into a bigger pot, plus it's been in here for two to three years, so it's probably in need of going into a different pot now anyway. Um, and I think I'll go slightly bigger on the pot. Plus, to be honest, this pot doesn't seem to really suit it that well anyway. You've got a fairly rugged old tree. If you haven't watched any of my other mulberry tree videos, this mulberry tree was taken off a 50-year-old tree at my parents' house, one that we used to pick the mulberries from, so it's got good memories. So I wanted to, you know, keep their memories going and I did an air layer on it. And this is... Probably one of the original little branches because the tree, parents tree hasn't been watered so it's a very stunted tree anyway. And this branch here is probably 30 plus to 40, 40 years old, just this branch that I air laid off. And yeah, so pretty old. Um, the air laid took pretty well. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to collect some of this moss off the top. I've weeded it. And there was a lot of weeds in here also. So I weeded it and there's not a lot of moss left now, maybe half it. There was a lot of creeping oxalis and crap in there. So I'll harvest the moss that I can. Maybe grab a bit of new moss. If I can find some. There's some creeping oxalis stuck in the middle. Bloody pain. Bugger of a thing, you know. Gets every bloody wear. Anyway, do what I can to get it out. I'm hoping not to repot it with the same crap in there. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to scoop all this moss off. I'm going to pull it out the pot carefully. Try not to break it like I did that other repot that I did. And yeah, that's about it. Just repot it. Put it in a bigger pot. Try and find the pot. I only have a couple to choose from, so there's a good chance it's probably not going to suit this tree anyway, but at least it'll have a little bit more room to grow and it'll hopefully be a little bit happier. Because, to be honest, it wasn't overly happy in this last year, and I did let it dry out at one stage and it actually lost all its leaves and then reshot. I was actually really worried that I was going to lose it. All the leaves fell off in the middle of summer, and then it had one last little shoot in autumn. And it got a little bit of extra energy before it went back into winter. So those leaves that it shot out in autumn did set. And then sit on there for a fair while while it collected its last bit of energy before it went to winter. So I'm hopeful it'll wake up fine. I'm not going to cut any roots off like I said. I'm just going to be slipping it up into a bigger pot. And hopefully getting rid of all these weeds on the surface. No worries. So let's try and get it out of this pot. I've just got to get some tools. Oh, before I start, I just want to show you a video. I went bush walking on Friday, and I just want to show you, yeah, me little bush walk. Got a little bit of footage of the bush walk. Cheers.
Good day. Aussie bonsai bloke. Yeah, go. Just taking a bit of a bush walk. Um, after work, before I get home, I just wanted to have a bit of a look around in the bush. Some of the native stuff around the place. Lots of, you know, grasses and stuff. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'll maybe show you a few plants. But anyway, just wanted to show you the native bushland in Australia. She's pretty harsh. Very sandy. We come across a lizard. I'll show you that. No worries. Cheers. Good day. Well, in the middle of me bushwalk here, come across a sleepy lizard or a stumpy shingleback. It's just chilling out there. Pretty cool. Not overly happy to see me, but he's alright. Very cool. Anyway, back to the walk and cheers. Some really cool little flowers. I hope you can see them. Pretty cool flowers. Not sure what they're called, but they're pretty cool. Here's another cool plant. Some nice flowers. Pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm running on about 2% battery here, so let's hope I don't get lost because I won't be able to use the map to find my way home in the middle of the bush. But anyway, that's one of the plants, pretty cool. And there's many like it. Really cool native bushland. No worries. Well, if you hear my video, I didn't get lost and I made it home. There's some other little plant. Plenty of little plants around, grasses, lots of them. Anyway, no worries, I'm not digging today, I'm just having a look around. Cheers. Okay, well, I made it home, and that just happened. Where I said at the end of the video, my phone went flat. Well, you wouldn't believe what happened, I walked about... Oh, 20 minutes to half hour into the bush and I got out of the bush on dark it took me hour and a half to two hours to walk out because I walked in the wrong bloody direction I didn't know where to go because my phone went flat I shouldn't have gone in there you know on 7% battery anyway it was a bit silly then I had a bit of a chat with Adrian Eggleton who makes the turntables he rang up out of the blue and anyway, that drained the rest of my battery. Not your fault, Adrian. My fault, bloody stupid fault for going in there without a battery. But anyway, what happened is um, just as I was about to turn around and come back, the phone went flat. And, you know, that bushland, pretty hard to tell where you are. Everything looks the same. And I literally walked in the wrong direction for ages. And it got down to maybe 20 minutes, half hour before dark. And I was seriously contemplating sitting under a tree for the night and shivering. It got down to four degrees that night, Celsius. So I, I literally almost thought, this is it. I'm going to have to sit here the night. Um, anyway, so right when I was about to give up, I seen the road in front of me. I could hear the traffic, but it was getting further and further away, so I just figured I was well lost, which I was. <laughs> and then, oh man. And then I found the road, and I was way away from the car, to walk back to the car. Got home on dark, or just after dark, because it's only oh, 20 minutes, probably 20 minute drive to the scrub where I walked from home. Just after dark, got home. Missus was all worried. She was just about to go for a drive on the way to work to see if she could see my car, which she probably would have seen. It was on the side of the road near the park there. 
And anyway, we had daughter's party the next day, so if I did end up sleeping out there the night, it would have, you know, thrown that out a bit. But, you know, got me way up, lesson learned. Do not go in there with a flat battery ever again. Pretty hard to find me way out. But anyway, pretty funny. Pretty funny, everything worked out all right. I only joked about getting lost, but it actually happened. Anyway, back to this tree. We've got some wire holding this one in. And I know this is a, you know, a decent pot, so there's no ridge, so it's not gonna get stuck and break the pot. I wouldn't have thought. It'll come out like they should come out. Been in here for a few years. I'm expecting it'll have a fair few roots because these mulberries actually root pretty well. And they have actually really funny looking roots. They're almost orange and tubulous or something like that. Okay, it's not coming out too easy. And this pot, someone has broken before, so. Yeah, someone's cracked it before and glued it. Oh no. It's like deja vu. It's going to happen again. I'm going to break another pot. Maybe I should save myself the effort and just break it. <laughs> nah, I'll go and get the... I'll go and get the... the root thing out like I did last time. Except it's a smaller tree. Should be more manageable. And I can hopefully get it out. I thought this was a better pot, but it's not. So, we'll do that. I'll go and get that tool. And I'll catch you in a sec. Okay, I'm back. Got the tool, infamous tool again. Let's see if I can't smash another bloody pot, eh? Last time that was pretty embarrassing. Smashed me pot on video. I could have chose not to upload it, but I thought, ah, oh, bugger it, you know. Got to show every side of bonsai, good and bad. So I just bloody showed it anyway. But let's hope this doesn't happen again. And if it does, I may not bloody show this one, I tell you. And just on another note, I was looking in the camera, this tree really does look quite natural when you look at it. It's got a really natural structure to it. I haven't done any wiring. I don't believe the mulberries really like wiring anyway. I've just done clip and grow. I chose the main branching from the air layer, like left the main old branches and then I've just sort of grown out the ramifications since. But anyway, this is not, not really looking forward to this, but here we go. This is what you normally would do. You cut around the edge like this. Lucky I checked there was a bloody lip on this one as well. Okay, go on the next one, next side. Cut really well around the edge. I think the problem with that big tree is I couldn't get to the bottom of the root ball because it was just so deep. Whereas this one, I'm hitting the bottom of the pot. So there's a good chance I'll get it out. The only thing I don't like about all this is I wanted to keep all the roots. And the problem with cutting it out of a small pot like this, you're actually trimming the outside of the whole root system all the way around, which is not ideal on a tree like this. I had a hard summer, didn't grow much, and I'm cutting it up into a bigger pot. Definitely not ideal. And if you had hindsight, and I look forward and this died because I cut too much off, I'd rather smash the pot, but I don't think it will, but anyway, it's done now, cut around it. Ideally, I didn't want to lose any root ball, but anyway, let's see what happens now. Okay, it's carefully trying to come up. Now that's what was meant to happen with the olive, but... It was just too big to manhandle, too deep a pot. Okay, so I just want to show you what's happened now. I've cut literally a ring off the whole outside. 
all the way around now. Okay, so you can imagine that was in there like that. And now it's all been cut out, a whole ring around it. And that's sort of what you have to do with these pots with a lip. It's not too bad if you're going to trim the outside off and put it back in the same pot, you know, shrink the ripple down, pack some new soil and just put it in the same size. But in this case, I didn't want to do that. But anyway, I won't have to touch the bottom of the root ball much. Okay, so now I'll just go and get my other tool. My root tool. You'd think I'd, you'd think I'd get a bit more organised and grab all this crap before I start the video, wouldn't you? But nah. Good old Aussie fun's old bloke. He waits until he's in the middle of a video before he tries to find all this stuff. So I've got a proper root hook, or the one that I made up with an old punch. The one that I made up with an old punch I think is less aggressive. I'll just try this one. I don't want to be too overly aggressive with it. No, it's too aggressive. So basically what I'm going to do, just work the top bit of the soil off without trying to wreck too many roots. Like I say, I want to keep most of this and just pull those bloody creeping oxalis roots out when I find them. Nice big root over here I found, which is the actual tree. And the more that I can get out now of those weeds, the less trouble I'll have later. Mind you though, now that I've got things under control around the house, you know, I can spend more time doing all this sort of weeding and general maintenance of the bonsai. Like last year I was just in damage control. I was just spread too thinly over the whole summer, looking after all the big trees that I've got out in the paddock and moving into the house, building fences, putting up a rainwater tank. You know, I was just spread too thinly to be honest. I just couldn't do everything, whereas now, you know, things are getting more under control. I have to do some more watering the big trees out in the paddock, but, you know, not as, not as often and not as much water. And then next year, I won't have to water at all, but it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to, you know, stay on top of these trees. Worked it out, if I come home from work and weed three trees a night, all of my trees will get weeded almost every month. And then after a couple of months, you know, they get easier and easier. If they get weeded every month, every month they get slightly easier to weed, so it'll end up being quite a quick process, and even three, Fairly weedy ones don't take that long, maybe 10 minutes each. So half an hour a night, I'm happy to do that. And it gives you a good chance to sit down with your tree and, you know, have a good look at it, make sure it's growing all right. Okay, so I think I've combed out enough of that. Not going to go too hard on it, like I said. I didn't even want to take the outside off, but I have. But I don't want to go too hard just because I had a fairly hard summer. There is actually quite a lot of good fibrous roots in here. And I'm tearing a few out, you know. But it's actually, because it's an airlock, it's actually got really nice radial roots anyway. And in time, They'll get thicker. Some of these are actually quite thick already. And in time I'll expose them, but I don't want to do all that right now and stress the tree out too much because this is quite a meaningful tree to me. You know, we used to collect, you know, fruit off this as kids, so I don't want to 
have any sort of risk of losing the tree. And as you can see, just trying to show you, it's actually got a fair few good roots here anyway. And a nice radial spread of roots anyway, so and quite, you know, quite fibrous sort of root system. So it's pretty happy. I'm going to put in a slightly bigger pot, that's all. Probably would have been fine last year if I could have managed to water a bit better and not let them dry out so much. Last year I didn't even have an automatic watering system set up for it yet, so what happened is it relied on me hand watering and some days, literally, I'd get inside at 10 o'clock at night, literally go out, just give them, you know, the quickest blast with the hose that I could before I went to bed. Then I'd get home, go out and water the big trees in the paddock, come back and find out that half of them are dry because I didn't water them properly the night before because I was in too much of a rush. And that pretty much happened all summer. I did get a bit of an automatic system set up, but that failed a couple of times, and because I was so busy, I didn't even go to check to see that it was working every day. A couple of times it actually failed on me. Yeah, so a couple of times it failed on me, and they went three days, no water in the middle of summer, which is absolutely devastating. And I did actually lose some trees. I think I lost a cracked myrtle, and couple others, but thankfully nothing really significant, you know. Didn't lose my significant tree, so I'm happy about that. Okay, there's one stuck at the front there, but I don't want to be too aggressive on it. Oh, that's what that is. Thought it was a crossing route, but that's actually my wire. Okay, so I got my wire out. I thought there was another wire, but... Been able to locate it. I've cut two wires from the bottom. And I'll just give it a little scratch underneath. There's my netting. Just a bit of steel fly screen. Get the bugs out. I'll probably put it back in. Well, it does have holes in it now. Now maybe I'll just put a bit of gutter guard in instead. You can see I'll just scratch the bottom a little bit. You can see the brew system is actually pretty healthy, so looking at this, I'm quite happy and really confident that it's going to be fine. So I'll just scratch it a bit, but there's a lot of roots there and it's going to be fine. So I'm happy to see that. And it actually looks like, despite that it lost some of its top, some of its top got burnt and then it regrew, the actual root structure itself didn't really have any any issue at all. Right, so now let's go choose a pot and decide what pot to put it in. That way I think it's the front. No worries. Okay, so we've got a few pots here. We've got that one. This is the one that I got off the side of the road. We've got a plastic pot. Give it a fair bit of room. This one will give it a fair bit of room also. You can see the size difference. This one here, heaps of room. Just carefully put that down. I really know, you know, like selecting pots, I've got no real idea about it really. So here we go, we've got a, the round blue one. I think that looks pretty good. 
a little bit worried that it's slightly too small just because it's not a lot bigger than the old one but probably big enough um, we've also got this blue one a bit darker blue and square obviously and that one there will give it a lot of room a lot more depth So that one there is a good possibility, could happen. Um, whether or not I have it hang over that way or that way, I don't know. We'll see in a sec. Uh, the only other one I've got, I'll just go and get it. Well, I've got two more. I'll go and get the other one as well. So. No, that's huge, that's just stupid. Uh, I'm be getting that one, but I also have the other round pot. The other round pot that came with the, um, the set of three that I got from the side of the road. The set of three free. Three for free. I don't know, I don't know how the legs go, but that's the front. Well, that is probably look better like that. That's another option. So now I'll just have a look behind the camera. Okay, so it looks okay, but I think a little bit pale because you gotta remember these trees have really nice deep green foliage. It's gonna have a fairly pale pot underneath. Um, and then they get the really nice red berries which turn into the you know, really dark mulberries. I don't think I got many last year because I think they burnt off. Whoops. Pardon me. <laughs> um, anyway, I think they either burnt off in the sun or maybe some bugs ate them out. I don't know. I can't remember, but I know I didn't get any. The year before I had quite a lot, it looked really good, it was just covered in mulberries. Still in the same pot, but another, another thing about this pot is it's quite shallow. So, I mean I could raise it a little bit and just have it raised up in the middle, which is not ideal. Um, i tell you what, I'm going to have to go into all those pots. I think I might go with this dark blue one. Okay, it's a bit dirty. I could give it a bit of a clean, I suppose. I'll give it a bit of a clean. I'll just show you how you easily clean your pots. Um, reasonably good way to clean a pot. I'm just going to find the rag. As per normal, nothing's easy. Can't happen to find a nice easy rag to grab anyway. Got one now. All you do, you get your old WD-40, spray it on your rag or the side of the pot. Don't, don't get it in there because I'm sure the tree doesn't really like it too much if you get it in the pot, but on the outside it's fine. how quick that pot comes back up. Look at that shine. It's another trick people use when you put them in a show too. You can, or if you want to display it on your table for your friends, you can do that. You'll notice this end here is no good. Another drama. What happened is I had it sitting on a cupboard outside. We had a windy day. The pot didn't fall off, but something fell off the top of the cupboard and landed on the pot. So I was pretty happy about that. You know, seemed to break everything. Not much good for keeping things new and nice. I seem to just smash everything, everything I get my bloody hands on. So I'll go around the whole pot like this. From the front, you can't see that, so 
too bad. Careful not to put it on the inside. I'm sure the tree would survive anyway, but it's probably good practice to not. come up come up a tree hope you can see it on camera but it's like chalk and cheese to what it was like I don't know if I'm in the way of the light here or not you can see how quick and easy it comes up just a little trick for you notice there's a crack over here but I think I think I might have glued that, I'm not sure. Anyway, if it breaks in the summer, who cares? So next thing is I'll get the bonsai soil. And just like before, I've got to go for a walk because I didn't organize it earlier. So I'm on the other side of the shed, just grab it now. I'm about the most unorganized person you'll ever bloody meet. Maybe I should go to all these plastic pots, at least I won't break them. Actually, one thing I'll do in this video, which I don't normally do, is I'm going to tie this tree in because this tree gets quite top heavy with all these branching, and when it gets leaves on, they get quite biggish leaves. Not huge, but catches a lot of wind and it can blow over, so. I'm going to actually wire this one in. I'll show you how I do that. The screen's already in this pot. I didn't, don't know if I showed that, but the screen's are already in. So I'm just using my Osmocote Bonsai Mix from Bunnings. Seems to work fine for the hot Australian climate. Well, where I live. If you're in the hills or somewhere cooler, you know, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it'll probably keep your bonsais too wet, but where I live, out in the sticks with all the heat and the dry summers, perfect. I've got no issue with it at all. Been using it for years and it's been fine. Anyway, so there's the tree in it. So I'll grab some wire and I'll just show you what I do. Okay, once again, all my stuff was nowhere near where I needed it. I've got bad organisational skills. Well, I know is I wouldn't want to marry me. I'd send me insane. Right, so what I do is I always use, I was going to say copper wire before, but I always use aluminium wire because apparently copper's no good for a tree. Um, whether or not that is the case or not, who knows, but I believe it to be the case, so I only use aluminium wire to hide, uh, hide, hold down a tree. So I'll just shove the tree there like that. I'll do one at the back, then I'll do another one to wrap around the front. And I do this on trees where I think they look a bit dodgy, a bit wobbly. Um, I don't want them to blow around. On a tree with a good solid base, and you know, that's not so top heavy, like this one's pretty top heavy, then I will wire it in. I think in the past you haven't seen me wire them in much, so I'll push them out the way. Now we've got to decide what we want for the front. Okay, because we're going into a bigger pot, there's room for movement. I've always been pretty happy with how it looked, so I don't think I'd do any drastic movements. Could possibly go around that way a bit. Just get it so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so I can go there or spin it around that way a bit. There. There. Hard to say. <laughs> I 
think I'll go there somewhere. Possibly. Then I've got to decide whether I want it to hang just outside the pot. A little bit, have it in the middle and have it hang out this way a bit. Or on that side and sort of balance out in the middle of the pot. I'm pretty happy with it. Being fairly neutral, you know. Okay, so I'm pretty happy there. So when I'm happy there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wriggle these wires into the root ball bit, both sides, just wriggle it in, and try and wriggle it just under the main front roots if I can. So I'm tying sort of, you got your main roots spreading out like that, and then you got the rest of your root ball underneath, I'm trying to just weave, weave it underneath so it's hanging on roots that you won't see. So if it cuts a few off or marks them, you'll never see it. Whereas if you did it on the top of the root ball, see here I'll go just under. If you do it on the top of the root ball, then, you know, if it cuts in, you'll be able to see it. So I'll just do that. Cinch it up fairly tight. It won't go ridiculous because for one, it's only fairly light aluminium wire. And then I'll just push the tag end down so you don't see it. That's the front. And then I'll do the same with the back. So I've got this big root here. I'll put it underneath that. Wiggle it in. Any big roots here, I'll wiggle it underneath. Same thing. Tight, cinch it. Now I'll go get me pliers. And guess where we bloody pliers are? Other side of the shed. I'll go get them. Alright. Got me pliers. Got me pliers. Now all we do is you pull up. And then wind down as you take the slack off, pull up, wind down, take the slack off, and I'll do the same on the other side, even though I did push the tag in down, I'll give it a bit of an extra now. So I'll pull up, you don't want to overdo it to the point where you break your wire because then you've got to Repeat the whole process. You can see that's in there. And if the tree goes over, the pot goes over with it. Can't roll out the pot now. So that should be good. Last thing is to cut these tag ends off, fold them in. This one's all good on this side. So that's it. So now all I'm going to do just put some Soil in the sides and you've seen me do this if you've seen me do this before I'll just give you a two second demo and now that I've used everything it's all available I'm using my root hook just to wriggle down the soil as I work it in already sort of moved it around, it's all in contact on the bottom. Now I just work it in. So that sort of firms it up. When it gets really firm and you can't feel any more air pockets and no more soils going in, then you sort of move on to the next area and just keep repeating the process until you're going around the whole thing. Don't stab it in and out so much because what that does is it'll pull the good roots up to the surface. You just sort of stab it in and work it around 
in circles and then carefully pull it out otherwise you can pull roots out with it so just be careful and when you're finished I like to give it a bit of a pat down and some of these roots on the surface that one's a weed some of these roots on the surface at the end I like to um, put moss on and that keeps them alive anyway and you'll find when you take moss off you'll find a lot of good roots under there because the moss really helps the environment for it to live in okay I'll go around the whole thing like that and then I'll get back to you when I've got a moss at cheers welcome back well I've just been out collecting in the dark getting a bit of moss I've sort of ran out in the garden so I'd go outside out in the bush and try and find some more moss so I've got some which reminds me I've got to turn this off might play around with the camera otherwise so next thing is just going to go around and place some moss on try to get a lot of different types of moss just to keep it interesting just uh, another one of those bloody creeping up zalus things anyway so I'm just gonna go around place some moss in and around the place here just getting rid of a crossing root there before it causes trouble so there are a couple roots here that are starting to show up and I might try to moss around them although over time the moss will cover it again anyway. Like I say I'll put a few different types of moss in. I've got some that's gone to seed. Although I don't think moss has seed, I think it actually has sperm like you and me have sperm. Although I've got the snip so I don't really have sperm anymore no more kids for me but I think it does have some sort of weird sperm it's been around for millions of years apparently anyway a bit of trivia for you although I don't really know much about it so I didn't really can't really explain too much about it and basically the sperm swims around finds a female or flies around in the air I'm not sure I think actually the rain sort of hitting on the moss spreads the sperm around in the water, I think. Anyway, like I say, I don't know that much. So I shouldn't really be trying to explain it. <laughs> anyway, it's an ancient thing anyway, but pretty cool for bonsai. We've got a couple little toadstools here as well. I'll try not to squash them because toadstools look pretty cool. Stuck in the moss. Oh, and by the way, anyone that tells you that toadstools or mushrooms are no good for bonsai, they're full of shit. Basically, just full of shit because at the end of the day, mushrooms or toadstools is fungi and your soil, if your soil is any good, should have fungi and bacteria in there, which should then help the, you know, the mycorrhizae and you know feed the nematodes and basically I think what happens is you have you know your fungi and bacteria in the soil eating on your bark chips and your organics and then you have your nematodes which eat the fungi and the bacteria and a lot of nematodes are good and then what happens is the tree feeds on the excrement or the piss and the crap from the nematodes and that's how it can get the nutrients up and then you also end up with stuff like mycorrhizae and I think the mycorrhizae can also directly attack the bacteria and, and get nutrients straight into the roots it sort of attaches itself to the roots otherwise it relies on the excrement from the nematode something like that anyway so just putting some moss on i think i might have run out anyway i may well edit all that out because really i was just blabbering on like an idiot
no real idea what I'm talking about. Just chucking a heap of crap out there for you to listen to, that's all. Anyway, so I'm nearly, nearly around most of the tree. I'm definitely going to run out of moss. I'm going to have to find some more. Do another late night excursion. At least it's in my own property, so I'm not going to get lost. So that's one good bloody thing. Hope to get lost out there again. Yeah, almost wrecked the whole party for the daughter because then they would have found my car and had to send out a search party. No one would have got any sleep. That's if they even found me that night. If they didn't, I would have walked out in the morning or whatever and then... Who knows? Mrs. might have been up all night trying to look for me and might have called the whole party off. So I'm glad it didn't work out like that, but I'll tell you what, it was pretty bloody close. I was starting to look for a nice, comfortable stop, you know, place to stop for the night. Didn't really fancy it because I knew that it was going to get down to almost frost. And I only had a fairly light jumper on. And I seriously thought I was going to be stuck out there. I didn't hold much hope there at one stage of finding my way out before dark. Thought I was in serious trouble as far as getting out that night. So a bit of a lesson for me anyway. And not only that, I didn't tell anyone I was going bushwalking, which is even worse. Bit of mice on the ground here. Okay, I'm going to have to get a little bit more moss for the back. I'll catch you in a minute. Cheers. Okay guys, well, I'm back with some more moss. Got some cool moss, some ordinary moss. And, you know, a bit of everything. Even the mushrooms. Keep this moss alive, basically, you just need to water it a fair bit, you know, keep it moist. Especially when it first establishes onto this new soil. You know, treat it like a new patch of lawn. And, to be honest, if you're giving your bonsai enough water, moss should be, your moss should be fairly green anyway. Although in summer it will brown off a bit. Pretty normal for it to brown off in summer. Maybe not die completely. I have to say one other one other thing that I've noticed since I've been out here at this new place. The water I use is what I like to call swamp water. But really all it is untreated water straight from the Murray. Um, straight out the Murray, untreated, no chlorine, no nothing added. And to be honest, I find, well, I'm finding that the moss actually seems to grow a little bit better without all that chlorine on it all the time. Whereas before, I had treated water, it puts chlorine over everything. And I'm finding that the moss seems to grow a little bit better. Not that it didn't grow well before, it still grew well before. And another thing too, I don't seem to have half as much trouble with these blackbirds that I used to have. I used to have a lot of blackbirds in Murray Bridge where I live. Lived, I mean. And once I moved out of town, um, yeah, once I moved out of town, I haven't seen any blackbirds, so that's good. Hope I never see them again. Yeah, they were always real bad. Anyway, that's it for the moss. Sorry to bore you with the sex life of moss and all that other crap. Anyway, fast forward if it gets too boring. All right, I've only got one little piece left over, so. 
pretty well there. Save that for the next tree. I'll put it outside and keep it watered. Save it for the next tree. You can grow moss on flat trays as well with just a little fine covering of soil. Keep it damp. Spread a bit of moss on there. But then, of course, you have to weed it. Same as your bonsais. So it's another job you've got to do. Anyway, I'll just clean up this table and get back to you for a spin of the tree. So, tree pot went pretty well. I will give the tree and the moss a bit more water. Just for a second. Give it a bit of water. Beauty. Alright. I'll give you a spin of the tree on the way out. Cheers for watching Aussie Bonsai Float. Please like, share, subscribe. Check out the Instagram. I'm a bit slack on the old Instagram, but occasionally I'll put a photo up. No worries. Cheers for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.